Welcome to Still In It, a 5MEO DMT Journeys podcast, where I talk to real people about their 5MEO experience. Our goal is to bring you honest and diverse perspectives about what this medicine is all about. I'm your host, Jesse, and I'm excited to have you along for the ride. So hop in and enjoy as we discuss what preparation, ceremony, and integration look like. This podcast is sponsored by Enfold, offering safe and sacred experiences in British Columbia. To learn more, visit enfold.org. That is E-N-F-O-L-D.org. Or click the link in the show notes. And now, without further ado, I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, and welcome to our podcast. We have a wonderful guest with us today. Uh, His name is Shaheen. Hi, everybody. (laughs) Great to be here, Jesse. Thank you very much. No, thank you. We're very grateful to have you on our podcast. Um, How were you called to 5MEO DMT? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Uh, It's probably when I look back at how I actually took on the call, it was the most almost impulsive thing I've ever done in my life. But it was mainly because I was in uh, a very in a place of almost absolute trust vis a vis the person who who suggested it to me. So I had gone through my first um, experience with uh, psychedelic medicine in the context of a therapeutic setting uh, with a with a practitioner in in Vancouver, who's also a very dear friend of the family and. uh, I was with one of the gentler medicines, and it was my foray into into this space. Um, the August of that year, he reached out to me and he said, "Hey, we we had, there's this opportunity since you're a bit of a psychonaut now, because I had already done <laughs> ayahuasca and mushrooms and uh, a few other things by then. Uh, of the most potent medicine there is, they call it the God molecule, and if you feel called for called to it, I can send you some info." I said, "Don't." Don't say any more. Sign me up <laughs> where it is and, and tell me where to show up and when and so on. And yeah, so that was with the most, uh, the, the least amount of info I went into the into the experience. And the rest of it we can probably delve into. But uh, yeah, it was that sort of just almost like an intuition that I need to take that step, which was counter to my approach to any decision in life prior to yeah Yeah. um i know your background's a little bit in science so you definitely fall more on the intellect and rationale and um but i think that's the way that in a way psychedelics works is you just get a call or a knowing um yeah to come yeah Yeah. Uh, when was your retreat it was earlier this year right we're coming up to almost like 12 months uh yeah that was uh, the retreat with uh with Unfold was in January of this year, late January of this year, but I had already done a session with five prior to that. And okay. this was, me- yeah, this was meant to be a couple's retreat for myself and my beloved uh, to experience that union, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, together or in the same setting in a very safe container. We had come to get to know Steve prior to, uh, embarking on the journey and uh, yeah we really fell in love with uh, their approach with him as a person as as a truly unique and generous soul and uh, yeah uh, shared life experiences you know having raised a teenager was very important to us some people (laughs) would not know what that feels like in that space (laughs) And, and for us it was a plus because that's where we were struggling prior to getting on that journey and yeah so having people who could share some of those memories yeah. and struggles with us was was very key yeah that's fun it's a little bit of a yeah. twist to date night for you and your wife <laughs> exactly um, yeah cute okay. okay um do you mind sharing a little bit i guess about your five experience with enfold um and if you don't yeah. mind you can also like tie in how perhaps like the setting in your other um five experience like if they were different or the same? Yeah, yeah. The setting was uh, certainly, um, you know, I, I was in, in the first experience, uh, it was a very rough and tumble kind of setting, you know, uh, off someplace off grid on, on one of the islands nearby. It was almost like camping, but indoors, you know, there was a structure, but there was no running water. There was no, you know, anything of that sort. So, uh, which for which I was, everybody was grateful because it just created a, you know, a sense of intimacy and, uh, you know, roughing it out together and journeying together, all of that. 
but I knew Ellie, my wife, uh, would not enjoy a lot of those elements. So uh, hence, kind of looking out to see if she were to go through the same experience, where can I find? And then I jokingly said this, I think at one of the communal circles that I was looking for, you know, somewhere with the running water and I ended up in Waldorf Astoria, you know, <laughs> it's like basically the complete opposite, like uh, on the, on the spectrum of, of basically uh, comfort and, uh, um, yeah. and being looked after and, you know, all of that. You know, I don't think there I've ever been to a place like this before in my whole life. Uh, like the level of care, the level of attention given to every possible, every permutation of, <laughs> like, at least in my experience of what I could have asked, what I what could have come up, and there was always, you know, something ready at hand to 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 meet that, and it wasn't the experience. Of, of receiving these wasn't also very abrupt. So it was almost like a flow that the intention would come up or the question would start percolating. And then there was like something happening that would <laughs> cater to that, to that intention. So uh, really, truly magical. I mean, for a scientist to speak of these words, it's sacrilege, but <laughs> like I can't, yeah. I can't encapsulate it any other way. So, yeah. We appreciate that you, um... of course. <laughs> also like feel that way about the space that they've created at Enfold and that you also feel very held there. It is quite, it's beyond just like the aesthetic. It's like the actual energy and the care. That Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. the reflection. The aesthetic is the, a reflection of the deep care that has gone into like every level of, of just creating that container. So even the aesthetic is conforming to the general sort of depth of care and compassion and and just presence of these two lovely souls and yourself and who, you know, all the, all the <laughs> folks that, uh, that assist in the process. It's really okay. a, a unique collection of very, very beautiful souls that have come to, <laughs> come to. Oh, uh, you're also a beautiful to to soul. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how was your actual, how did like five feel to you, um, when you took it, your actual psychedelic yeah, the, journey? The first, the first, yeah, as you might imagine, again, because of my experience that unfold was, uh, preceded with the original, uh, experience, I think that had lowered my threshold quite a bit. So the initial experience is that of like a little, a little bit of a body high and, uh, you know, at, at a lower dose, uh, of two to four milligrams and, uh, you kind of getting to know that what the medicine can do, uh, which is why they call it the handshake. <laughs> so after having gone through this, you know, the escalation of doses and uh, back in August and then showing up at Enfold earlier this year, we went the assumption that the handshake is a handshake. So I was delivered <laughs> a three milligram dose and I almost had a full embrace an experience of full wow. embrace. I was gone for about 30, 40 minutes and uh, took a long time to land. And uh, by the end of it, I felt like uh, I actually said those words, I think, you know, after we, you know, sat down and chatted and stuff, I said, I think I'm done. And Steve uh, said, you th you're done with, like, we move on. I said, no, I feel like I'm done, done. Like, I don't, less is more <laughs> if I can get there with this <laughs> small amount, maybe. <laughs> Maybe the universe is the, or the medicine is telling me that, you know, take it easy, buddy. Um, and, but then we progressed and, and it just got much more interesting and deep and, uh, uh, you know, rippling effects of, of the experience, they reverberate through my being to this day. They've provided a, an impetus, almost like a, an inertia that was there for me to step out and to do stuff is, is gone. And I feel a lot more at ease with exploring new things and new ideas and taking on risk. Anyhow, so there's a lot I can talk about vis-a-vis -vis that, but yeah, uh, that was the first thing. So that, that was the handshake that turned out to be, you know, a lot more than a handshake. Yeah. 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 That's, that's beautiful. Um, do you mind, like you were just talking about how it had created like an impetus for you to start to, I guess, engage in life differently. Do you mind yeah. sharing a bit about like how you, maybe your integration was and the biggest changes maybe that you feel post-five? Yeah, the biggest, yeah, the biggest changes since I, I, I 
left uh, my academic life a number of years ago, about 10 years ago or so. As you might imagine, the transition into a new way of having a meaningful career wasn't uh, as easy as uh, you know I had anticipated. So I had to really struggle to find uh, meaning in, in what I did again and, uh, and, and find joy in what I did. I feel, felt like, you know, the challenges we faced as a family uh, over the period of COVID, it just kind of created almost like a clamshell around me. And I started kind of being fearful at a deep level of, of coming out and, and putting myself out there and taking on risks and trying new things. And it just felt like there was, there was a lot of energy and ideas and things bottled up on this end, almost like a volcano about to... <laughs> erupt and there was no outlet and what what this medicine did it was like it removed a lot of i don't know how it works to be honest uh but it feels like it removed a lot of the the negative memory traces around you know self-exploration and uh, exploring new things so i've gone through i'm actually finishing a pottery course right now and build you know for the first time <laughs> building things again with my hands <laughs> which I'm really enjoying. I feel like a little kid in the mud again, <laughs> which is beautiful. Uh, I've started to write and I'm launching a couple of new projects uh, that I had been sitting on for almost three, four years. But I think the medicine also helped uh, quite a bit in alleviating some of the anxiety around you know, being out there again. It's like, it really does shift perspective. And for you, it sounds like you have more playful um, energy with life yeah. like you're able to engage in like in a present yeah. way yeah. is that right yeah yeah i mean who thought that you know all people this reserved you know guy would take on uh surfing <laughs> you know? yeah yeah like it's open like it's almost like a generalized removal of barriers mental barriers that i was carrying you know i'm too old it's too late or i have more important like no screw it <laughs> just take on oh. life one step at a time <laughs> and i love it, that you know? whatever happens I... we'll deal with it yeah i think that's fantastic yeah. it's like you're renegotiating like who is shaheen it's like yeah. you're almost like embracing a new you you're allowing yourself yeah. to like get out of the yeah. container you once thought your identity was and that's exactly so... exactly exactly without losing the old shaheen but you know almost like kind of expanding uh, the bounds and you know what what else can we include here that is reflective of is conducive to having that playtime for that little boy to also be there <laughs> enjoy life and life is not all about being a dad and a caregiver and provider but also at least for me it's also yeah. to remember my roots as a as a playful curious little boy yeah. <laughs> so, oh that's so beautiful yeah. do you find that you have changed in the way you interact with like you yourself sounds like it changed. Does that also change the way you show up in different relationships? Like, do you find that they're more playful or more um, like a deeper connection or anything? Or how have you noticed? Yeah, no, I, no, we were going through the challenges of uh, parenting a teenager. And the way I was showing up for my daughter was from a place of, you know, fear and uh, judgment uh, because I was also not very kind to myself constantly judge myself. I was raised in this uh, high pressure environment of, of academic success and uh, accomplishment at all costs. So that obviously didn't reflect very, very, very kindly on, on my expectations of my, of my daughter. And uh, it had uh, nearly shattered our, our relationship to smithereens, you know, uh, to the point that she really didn't want to have anything to do with me. And that was two years ago. And now she can't have enough of my time. So, you know. <laughs> That's wonderful. Aw, Shaheen. That's beautiful, honestly. And you could see the depth of that relationship and like how bonded you feel to her, just like. It is very deep, yeah. I mean, the, the, the amount of transformation has been. I don't know on what scale I can measure it, but uh, the, the the speed at which it's happened is mind-boggling, right? Uh, people know or you know hear that 
psychoanalysis, psychotherapy, for any deep change, any lasting change to happen could get you, you know, anywhere from upwards of seven to 10 years to accomplish. And going into this, you know, the, the level of, of urgency I, I sensed and I saw in how bad things were uh, dictated to me that I, I have months weeks to months to turn the ship around. I don't have freaking years <laughs> to work on myself, to get to know why I do behave the ways I do so that I can then work on cognitive behavior therapy or some other method of adjusting those, those behaviors, changing them. So I needed a catalyst. I needed something to act now, right now. And, you know, really what changed me as a person and made me feel at ease with my role as a as a true compassionate human being that is now a father. It came from that experience, the first experience with five, of actually finding an unbounded <laughs> ocean oh. of compassion right here, right inside here. <laughs> and if oh I if I have it here, how can I not share? How can I be so so critical of anybody and any especially my own daughter who's part me. So just just sitting with that changed me as a person mm -hmm. and what what better a place can a dad of two teenage daughters be <laughs> yeah to be the, the center of their attention like i couldn't have asked for any more than that so I'm that was grateful. so beautiful <laughs> yeah Thank oh you. i totally Thank can you. feel like your words carry a lot of weight and meaning um do you have any feedback or advice for anybody who's just looking to potentially do or take five MBO DMT. Like, is there anything that when you look back on your journey, you're like, I wish I would have known that, or something that you want to leave with the listeners? Yes, certainly. Uh, having having taken the medicine my twice, I have gained such a level of reverence for the for especially for five as a, as an unlocker of <laughs> Of, of human potential with the caveat that it has to be done in a very safe container. It has to be done around people who have seen it all because you don't know what aspect of your psyche is going to get triggered, activated, come to life, especially your subconscious by taking that journey. So definitely start slow, and do your research and find the most trusting right container you can find because the, yeah, the, the consequences could be, uh, potentially severe if it's not done. Right. Yeah. 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 Steve says all the time, you're signing yourself up for the unknown. So it's like, in order to allow yourself to like dive into the unknown, you should make sure that the container speaks to you. It's safe and will hold space yeah. for, what may or may not happen because the truth yeah. is you don't know. So absolutely. thank you for that. And in general, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast and sharing your story. I feel also a great debt of gratitude to the space, given how anxious I was before uh, about just coming out and being seen again. So I, I am grateful to be seen and heard and uh, I hope I've, in a small way, I've repaid some of the debt I feel towards the space of, of you know, paving the path uh, and removing some anxiety and hopefully some some obstacles, mental obstacles for people who are considering taking that step. So. 100%. And Shaheen, there's no debt to repay. I think that like you are seen, you are loved, and that is in, in itself is like you giving back. It's like the shift in yourself gives back yeah. to the the universe and there's no debt. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Still In It podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you're interested in hearing more, the best thing you could do is to leave us a review. This allows us to continue to record and inform others on the 5MEO experience. If you want to join our beloved community or learn more about us, feel free to visit us at enfold.org. That is E-N-F-O-L-D dot org.